Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to talk about the Uneasy Allies lockbox and just give my thoughts on the various items it has, and uh, at the end of the video I'll give you my thoughts on whether or not you should be opening this lockbox. Chapters will be listed down below if you want to skip ahead to any of the specific lockbox contents. So about this lockbox, we know that PC at least is getting it on September 13th, 2022. We do not know if console is also getting it at that time. Uh, there, there's been a bit of mixed information as to whether or not console is getting it at the same day. It is based on season three and four of Discovery. And as such, the items are all going to be from the 32nd century because that is the century that those seasons of Discovery take place in. The grand prize is the Courier Pilot Raider, which I was not that happy with when I talked about it in my last video. I still do not view the ship as something that is really worth getting, unless you're someone specifically interested in it for PvP. The first item in this lockbox is an EV suit. This EV, so EV suit is focused on protection and uh, protecting you from environmental hazards. What this means is that this EV suit's likely just going to be heavily focused on resistance and resistance against different hazards. So probably not the best EV suit ever. The EV suit has a clicky on it that will spawn a hazard that will deal damage over time to foes, slow them down, and it also has an extra effect depending on whatever hazard it spawns in. So... You know, here you can see the EV suit if you care about the visuals of it. But uh, for me, I don't see this being something that's better than the like the disco EV suit. I, I think that's still going to be a, a much better uh, EV suit. The disco EV suit from the Discovery reputation, that is. Then we have a universal console that will be in the lockbox and will also, you know, of course, be available to purchase on the exchange when players list it. This is called the Micro Dark Matter Anomaly. So this is a mini version of the DMA that we saw in the last season of Discovery. And when you hit this, it is projecting an anomaly towards the target and the anomaly will chase the target down and then it will chase down other ships and it will repeat until all the nearby ships are trapped or the duration expires. So this is another visual effect that some of you are probably going to be annoyed about, but this is spawning in a gravitational eddy that will chase down targets and deal kinetic damage to them and then drag them along. Uh, it will also provide you with power while foes are within the anomaly. So it does give you a benefit in that it gives you power. The passives on the console are going to provide you an increase to max subsystem power your exotic particle generator skill and hull repair rating. I think, you know, that this console might be something that some of you would look at for a science build. Uh, it's going to be fairly affordable on the exchange. I think a lot of the lockbox items this time around are going to be really cheap. It could end up being a really good EPG console, but as with most things, we have to wait until we actually have it on, on hand to test it and see if it's worth using. Next up, we have a new starship trait that is directly in the lockbox. Uh, so this is not one that you have to go out and get a ship for. The, the starship trait will be in a box by itself in this lockbox and will also be sellable on the exchange. It is called Sentient Starship. And this trait is focused on increasing your self-preservation. And it does so by increasing your healing skills based on you hitting a heal while you're under a certain amount of hit points. So part of it is for your hole. And when you activate a whole heal while your hole is below 90% capacity, it will increase the skill that boosts your whole heals. And that boost will stay until you leave the current map that you're on and will stack up to 20 times. And it has a second component that does the exact same thing for shield heals. So if you hit a shield heal while you're below 90% shield capacity, then it will boost your shield heals from that point on uh, while you're in the map. And that will also be removed when you leave the map. 
Now, this, the shield one only stacks up to 10 times, but it will automatically redistribute your shield facings for a couple seconds whenever it's activated. So, overall, this sentient starship trait does seem like a budget survivability trait, but, you know, it, we really have to wait to see what the numbers are. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be something used at a high level on any, like, tank builds. Because you get so much survivability from things like the protomatter attack consoles, especially when used alongside the whole image refractor console. I, I just don't see this being that popular for that, or given that, that there's already so many good heals out there. And this is only being triggered by bridge officer heals, I believe. So um, it'll be a good budget trait, like I said, but it, I don't think it's going to be a game changer for anyone's tank. Now we have some brand new weapons like we have with most lock boxes. However, there's no space weapons this time around. That is right. We're getting a new lock box and it does not have new space weapons. Instead, these are just specifically ground weapons or sp specifically they're called courier anti-proton ground weapons. So these have a proc on them or whatever that makes them hit a little bit harder than standard anti-proton weapons and then the proc uh, has a chance to or the, the proc has a chance to make your critical hits better than normal and it will also trigger if you exploit an exposed foe so i don't think these weapons are going to be that crazy good uh basically only get them if you care about the visuals and i don't have a picture of the visuals here but uh, there's one on the blog and I, I don't, I don't really think that, that this weapon looks like something I'd want to use. Uh, and then of course there is a Vandy shield in the weapon pack, even though there's no space weapons and it will give your ships the same texture that the courier pilot Raider had. And here's a picture of this skin on the, the stargazer. It does not look good. Um, I think they probably should have tried to have went and gotten a better picture, but this is the picture they decide to go with. So uh, that does not look very appealing to me. You know, let me know if you agree or disagree. Next up, we have a new universal kit module called the Blade Beetle Swarm. This will deploy a series of these Blade Beetle uh, mines, and these are engineered life forms that have a very short but volatile lifespan. So basically, these things are going to just run towards your enemy and they will pause occasionally to fire a saw that does kinetic damage that will go and cut through multiple enemies if they're grouped up. Uh, and then once it actually makes it to your target, it will blow up. So uh, this is a, a mine slash pet that will run towards the target and occasionally pause which means that the enemy can shoot it while it's just sitting there shooting the saws. So uh, probably not going to be that good. But if for those of you that were looking to get these after seeing them in that discovery episode, uh, there you go. But I am not really caring that much about these. Now we have the uh, duty officers here and the first one is for ground and then the last two are for space. The first duty officer, the ground one, is called the Sister of the Kuat Milan. I'm probably mispronouncing the name there. Uh, and when your cause is hopeless, she may pledge herself to your cause and provide aid, taunting foes, reviving down bridge officers, and damaging enemies. So this seems similar to the randomly transporting Saurian Doff we got with uh, one of the past lockboxes. I think the lockbox that had the crossfield refit in it. Um, you know, for some of you, that this may be helpful, uh, but it doesn't look that game changing to me. The next duty officer is foreign specialist. Foes at times trust their technologies more than they should. So when you use an engineering bridge officer ability that is targeted on a foe, it has a chance to remove a buff from that foe. Uh, so basically, if you use abilities like Aston Beam, Structural Integrity Collapse, uh, or any of the other engineering bridge officer abilities that can be targeted and placed on a foe. This has a chance to trigger and remove a buff from that enemy. Could be handy in a PvP situation or uh, 
in like HSC to remove the feedback pulls off the queen, but uh, probably not going to be the most popular duty officer ever. And then the last duty officer is also for space, and it is the meddlesome politician. Using a science bridge officer ability that is targeted on a foe, reduces incoming whole heals to that foe, and will cause the next few whole heals to be redirected to you. So this probably is something that would be easier to trigger than the foreign specialist. And, um, you know, if you're in a situation where you're going up against enemies that have lots of heals, this may be something to, to look into, uh, to redirect some of their healing back to you. Um, I think this is still really niche in its usefulness. I don't think this is a doff that everyone's going to be going out to run. Uh, but for some of you, this may be appealing. For, for me, I don't think any of these duty officers are really game-changing, and there's none of them that are going to impact the meta. Let's talk about the personal space traits now. The first one is Rogue Scientist Aboard. This will periodically activate a random ability on your ship. The abilities it can activate are Attack Power and Omega 1, Photon Torpedo Spread 1, or Emergency Power to Shields 1. And even if you do not have a torpedo equipped, it will fire out a Photon Torp Spread 1. Now, this, this trait could be interesting if we can boost up the damage that the, the, the Torp Spread does, then maybe this would be a bit more useful. Um, the emergency Power to Shields generally isn't really that valuable, so that, that buff isn't going to be that much. But getting the Attack Power in Omega or the Photon Torp Spread could be useful in some situations. But we're going to need to see the numbers on how well the Torp Spread is to, to see if it's really worth it. Next up is Independent Wingmate. And this will specifically boost the very first hangar pet launched, and it will give that hangar pet a damage resistance and damage boost. So this is only really useful for frigates. The, the issue here is that this is boosting the very first pet that you launch. So if you have fighters on your ship and you launch them, you know, that's launching two or three pets the first out of that set of three would be getting this boost. The rest are getting nothing. So for those of you that are using fighters or fighter squadrons, this probably isn't going to be the biggest deal ever. But for those of you that really like frigate pets, this trait could potentially be quite a good boost for your, your hangar pets. So uh, Meta impact with this one's a little bit higher than everything else in the lockbox because I could see some people actually taking advantage of this with their frigate pets. And then we have the last trait called Against All Odds, and this increases your whole healing on targets who are low on whole capacity. So for any of you that like to heal other players, and I imagine this would also apply to yourself, um, you know, if you use a lot of bridge officer heals, this will probably be something to take a look at. Now on the ground trait side of things, the first one is called Meditative Calm. This will increase your Expo's chance, then Absolute Candor, increased exploit damage, and negates the first control ability used on you. Uh, and then the last ground trait is Accept No Sacrifice, and this is the same as the last space trait in that it increases healing on targets who are low on health. So if any of that interests you, uh, you know, those ground traits are all going to be really cheap. So they should be fairly easy to pick up if they actually interest you. And the last item here is the, it's be, is being added to the Lobby store and it is the Kawat Malat sword. This blade and tra the training accompanying it turn the character into a deadly melee combatant is what they say. The primary attack is a randomized combo involving most normal sword styles of attacks. So, um, you know, if you care about swords, you know, this is probably something you're going to want to grab. Uh, generally, swords are not the most effective ground weapon type. Um, you know, if you want to read what the secondary attack or tertiary attacks do, I'll, you know, just pause the video here and read that. But, uh, 
swords are generally not something you want to run because the damage output on them is going to be lower than, you know, something like a Shax cannon or a Boolean cannon or a full auto rifle split beam. They're basically, there's lots of better options for you to use. Melee weapons require you to be right up against an enemy and the damage output usually just doesn't make up for the requirements on it. So I, I can't really recommend this sword unless you really want the visual. Of course, this will probably cost like 50 lobby. So if you really want it, it's not going to be the most expensive thing to acquire, but it, it's really just a, a visual thing. So should you open this lockbox? The answer is a hard no. Um, what I have written here is is true. Like every item that I've talked about except the ship is going to be very cheap on the exchange. We've seen this with every lockbox that's opened in the last couple of years. All of the traits, the doffs, they're all going to be super cheap on the exchange. The console, the starship trait, they're all going to be like super, super cheap, usually under like 5 million per. Um, in in many cases, like with the Emerald Chain lock box, for example, if you just bought like a master key or two and sold that key or the two keys on the exchange for EC, the EC you would get from selling those one or two keys would get you enough EC to go out and buy all of the items directly off the exchange, bar the ship from that lock box. So... If you want to mess around with the stuff, you know, even though I'm telling you guys not to open this, the, the wider player base is going to open this lockbox regardless of what I say. So take advantage of that. You know, that that's what I've done for a long time. I don't open many of these newer lockboxes because they're not worth opening. They're not profitable to open. And you could take advantage of the fact that most of the player base is going to ignore advice like this. And you can go out and buy these things real cheap. I think everything here is going to be very cheap. None of it really has a significant meta impact. The only big things here are the, uh, you know, the first two space traits I talked about, which were the rogue scientist aboard. And, and that, how well that impacts the meta and depends entirely on if the photon torp spread from it can be boosted by torp boost on your build. If that is able to be boosted, then this is going to be more useful on builds. But of course, getting an attack power on Omega would also be a fairly nice boost. And the second trait here, the, the one to boost hangar pets, you know, I don't think that's going to be something used on any DPS records at a high level. But for those of you that run carriers, especially that use frigate pets, this trait's probably going to be something to really consider. So... There's nothing in here that really shakes up the meta. So the prices should not be, you know, super high. Um, and I really do believe that if you are just patient, if you can wait a day or two, all of these items are going to be so insanely cheap on the exchange that you're, you will have regretted opening any of these lockboxes. I expect the ship itself to settle in the 600 to 800 million EC range on PC. I don't know what the console markets are like, so I can't say what it's going to go to there. But given the fact that like 90% of the, the comments I've seen are people not being a fan of the ship, I expect that a lot of people are going to open the lockbox and then post the ship up on the exchange, and I expect the price on it to just crash down. But look, that's, that's going to be it for today. Uh, hopefully this video has been helpful for you guys. Hopefully it's giving you an idea of what to expect from this lockbox and you know overall i have to say that i think this is probably one of the least like impactful lockboxes we have ever gotten uh it probably actually I, I would almost say that this is the worst lockbox we've ever gotten given the fact that there's no space weapons the ship is underwhelming the the console might be good for epg builds um the traits are meh for the most part like there's just nothing really game changing here so really not gonna not gonna change the game much for sure uh but that's gonna be it for today you know and once again thank you to all channel members for the continued support and 
you know, for really for all of you for the continued support because the growth in this channel recently has been crazy. The stream I did earlier today that I had to take down because I posted something on it that I shouldn't have. Um, you know, the, the, the amount of the support there has been huge, and I will be streaming again on Tuesday when the update goes live. I will be taking a look at the fleet updates specifically. I probably won't be doing the story mission on stream. I haven't even done the last two story missions. So I'll be focused on looking at the fleet stuff on stream and probably some of the lockbox items as they appear on the market. So if you're interested in that, uh, stop by on Tuesday, September 13th. I'll probably be going live just as the patch is, uh, as soon as the servers are coming back up after the patch. But that's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time.